Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Art Alien TV. Now today I'm going to be re-showing you this thing that I originally showed about two years ago in this video here, China Lands on Mars, Concrete Life Evidence. Now, in that video, it wasn't the main thing I showed, but I did show it in that video at some length of about three or four minutes I showed it and explained what it is and what I think it is, at least. Um, but what I've done recently is I've re done a lot of the images from that and I've done some new gigapans of this there's one here this is mass left and mass right this is the right and the left here, over here and then this one this is just the mass left one but it's much larger this has been doubled in size more than doubled and you can zoom right into it here okay now it's not very sharp because this has been enlarged but you can zoom in closer and get right up close to it, okay? Now, the best thing to do is actually to look at the clips down here. Because what I've done, I've got a raw clip. I've got enhanced clips from both the left and the right gigapan. So you don't really need to look at both of these. You can just look at this one. Because it's one of the best examples of a Martian head, okay? Now, when I say head, I mean... It's probably mummified and doesn't look very old and I don't know how old it is but it doesn't look like it's been there for millions of years it may have been covered in sand for thousands of years I don't know the sand may have blown away but when you look at the whole area you can actually see that there is a, a group of rocks here now this is raw so it's a bit hard to focus on but if you Basically, look at these rocks here. We've got an angular one here. There's one sticking up here. And there's a very angular one here with a point to it. And when you zoom in, you can see that these are joined. This is part of a wall or structure, as are these here. You can see this one is, is kind of rectangular, right? If it's still got fleshy material on it and hair, like it has, then it's more of a kind of preserved mummified head rather than a skull, okay? You can see these rocks around it. It's in a little clearing here. And a bit of a mound there going up. But when you look at the, the pattern of the rocks in the ground, it's in a kind of rectangular shape, right? Now that's a lot easier to see if you look at the enhanced version of it down here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in. Now this is the clip I did a couple of years ago, this one at the top, this is masked right. So this is from the right image, this one here. I'm going to go in a bit closer. And there we have it, right? It's pretty clear. Now, how big is this? It's about twice the size of a human head in height. Okay? So a human head would come up to where this eye is here and come back to here. So it's twice the height and it's probably more than double the size overall, okay? And you can clearly see the eyes, two shut eyes, they look like, uh, a nose with flared nostrils, quite a wide nose, what look like big lips, but what I think we're looking at here is facial hair, because we have this detail here coming up over the mouth, and there seems to be um, hair coming off like a beard going round and up under the nose okay with a moustache I could be wrong there's not quite enough detail this is quite a long way from the rover now you can see the rover here and it's looking right around and this is only part of the gigapan this is only one end of it and uh, this is part of the rover here and the rover's camera is looking right across the ground and this thing I would say this is about 20 feet away this thing this is about 30 feet so this is about 40 or 50 feet away from the rover but it still looks quite large now if this was a human skull at that distance it would be probably less than half that size at least half or less I would say now this is the the new clip I've just done uh, a few days ago masked right okay 
So the clip was done recently, but I discovered it on the 12th of uh, 21, May the 12th. And you can really clearly see what it is. Now, you don't have to be some kind of graphics genius to do this either. All you need to do is take a clip, put it in your Photoshop or whatever you use, colour correct it so it goes a little bit bluer, and then add lots of contrast, and this is what you will get. You can clearly see the eyes. There's a little, a small ear just here. You can see the nose, nostrils. You can see a mouth with what look like big lips, but I think these are teeth sticking out here. Two teeth or, or a row of teeth and a possible moustache and a beard coming down here. Now this is the mass left one. And you can see the same details here, but the beard is a bit clearer more defined here coming down the side and you can see that that lip and what looks like a moustache maybe coming round very strange and there's a bit more teeth detail in this one lip and teeth detail here now notice the shape of the head it's slightly conical right it comes up in a sort of conical oval shape with a slight point to it there okay now here is a double clip. Now this is the original clip I did about two years ago, which is masked right. And here's the new masked right image I've done, which I did a few days ago on the bottom, right? And you can see they match. Now this one's probably a bit darker, but there's not much difference here. This one's zoomed in more at the top. Let's go in a bit closer. So the original clip's probably the best one. It's a bit harder, the edges are harder. And you can really see those details, right? Look at the eyes, look at the nose, look at the mouth, beard. The ear isn't very clear, it's quite small, just there. And we have a slight point to the head there. And you can see all that in this one, which is the new one. It's been sharpened a bit more, probably this one. You can see all the same details here, right? But the original clip I think I did is probably the best one. It's more defined. Here's a close-up of the original clip on its own. Full screen. Look at the details. Now, here's the composite that I put on the Gigapans. Both of the Gigapans have got this on there. We've got the original clip here on the right, top right, and the two new clips on the left and the bottom here. So we've got mass left and mass right. Now the fact this, that this matches up in both the left and right cameras means it's real, okay? It's not, an, it's not an illusion. It's not in a big group of rocks where there's lots of rocks overlapping each other, causing strange lighting effects or whatever. This is not human, but I would call it a proto-human or proto-humanoid. So you need to use the hover zoom magnifier to look at this one. There it is. Okay, so it all matches up, and you can see that, that that sort of mound with the structure, ruined structure. So this thing is in a building, a ruined, buried structure here. And there are loads of these in the area, and a lot of these piles of rocks and groups of rocks actually represent buried, ruined houses. That's what they are. Okay, that's what they are. I've shown this from... Not only from uh, satellite images, but also from the helicopter images, the, the Mars Ingenuity copter images as well. So that's what they are. And a lot of them are interesting shapes. A lot of them are kind of rectangle shapes. There's some that are hexagons or octagons, and uh, they're all different shapes, but they are actual structures that are buried in the ground, covered in sand. And in some of them, like this one, you see the remains of a person that may have even lived in this building. Who knows? Mummified. The problem is it doesn't look very old and still has fleshy material. But like I've said before, things on Mars preserve extremely well. And this may have been covered in sand. There may have been a big pile of sand over this until very recently. And in fact, you can still see a lot of sand piled up here. So this could have, this could have been a bit like a mound for thousands of years, protecting this thing from erosion. 
these are different reconstructions of Neanderthal people. Very similar. We've got a similar nose and eye and mouth features here on these. This one's quite similar, I would say. Not quite. The, the nose would be wider. The Martian one has a wider nose with more flared nostrils. It has similar facial hair. Doesn't have hair on top of the head, but the head is is larger, much larger than this, and comes to almost like an ovoid point up like this. Right? Look at the details here. I'll go back a little bit. Look at those details. Now look at these. Very similar. Now, obviously, if we were as close to that one on Mars as we are to this, then we would see a lot more similar detail, I would say. The problem is it's about 40 or 50 feet away. Now, the brow ridges aren't quite as pronounced as they are on the Neanderthal image, but they're not far off. Now, the other day, about a week or so ago, I uploaded this video. And some people didn't like it, but a lot of people did like it. <laughs> The original footage is much darker than this. This has been brightened up a lot. So, you have to bear that in mind. But look at the head. Look at the head shape. We've got a conical, ovoid cranium up here. See that? Exactly the same shape. Or very similar. And it's more obvious when, when it turns and walks off. Now, wait, look at the turn. Look at this cone, this cone head. See that? This is almost like a cross between a Gigantopithecus and a Neanderthal, one of our so-called ancient relatives, right? We have very pronounced brow ridges like Neanderthals have, but unlike Neanderthals, which have a more flat skull, this has a more conical cone head-like shape and you can really see it when when the she walks away look at that now this creature bigfoot probably has a cranial ridge giving it that shape like many other primates or many primates do i've used a, an effect on it to outline it neon filter and you can really see that cone shape. So there we are. Now, in this video, I actually went into some detail about the, the breasts on this thing. Now, one person did comment saying, oh, it's obviously fake. It's a, it's a guy in a suit. No, it's not a guy in a suit. Would a guy in a suit know how to make fake breasts? This was 1967. Now, silicon implants were not invented until 1963 or, or 61, I think it might have been, right? But the problem is silicon implants don't move. Now, one of my uh, girlfriends from many, uh, many years ago had silicon implants and they didn't move. They were quite solid, I would say. They had a little bit of give in them, but not a lot. <laughs> now, I'm not being crass here. This is I'm being serious. You can actually see these moving. Now, in 1967, is it possible that someone would have been clever enough to make prosthetic breasts and put them on a suit like this? I don't think so. Because the, the saline and more flexible implants were not available on Earth until probably the late 70s, early 80s, or even later, mid 80s. Okay. Look at them. And if you watch it, you can see them moving. Let's go back a little bit. You can actually see them moving. These are not implants. You can actually see them moving. So this is probably real. I'm still not, I'm not 100% about that, but I'm, I'm sort of 95% there. And also, another thing that the sceptics always miss out are the feet. Look at the feet. Now, 
the feet have a mid tarsal break, which means the feet have a hinge, which means the feet bend this way, unlike human feet. And if you keep, if you watch the footage enough and play it back enough, you can you can look at the feet and the beat the feet have a bend in them, much like Neanderthals had, which is a mid tarsal break. The feet don't have arches in them like human feet do. Look. So, there we are. I mean, that's just there for comparison anyway. I thought I'd throw that in. The main thing I want to show you with that is the shape of the head. The, the slightly conical shape to it. Now, that Bigfoot footage is actually more pronounced than this. It's, it's more pointed. This is slightly lower but very similar. And then there is this thing, very strange indeed, with what looks like an arm and a hand here. This looks like a hand and a head with an eye. This looks like some kind of strange creature, but is it living? Probably not. It could be, um, it's possible it could be mummified or it could be a carving like a sculpture. Who knows? It may just be an optical trick, this one. There's a close-up. These look like fingers here on, on a, and a thumb. One, two, three fingers and a thumb. Elbow here, arm going up, body, and a weird sort of anteater-like head with a long snout here. Very weird. There is this, which is an animal skull, like a bear or dog type skull. It's even got a nose on the end, but Remains of a nose here. Eye socket orbit there. Long, elongated skull. Some kind of creature a bit like a bear or a bit like a dog, perhaps. Who knows? This is quite large. Um, this is probably about nine inches long, maybe ten or twelve. So, who knows? Perhaps it is real, after all. And you can see those breasts move there. You can actually see them. You watch the full speed footage at the beginning, they move. Now, prosthetic ones or plastic ones in a, on a suit would not do that. So I really can't see how this is uh, fake, especially back then. Look at the move, you can actually see the move. But the head shape and facial details are quite similar on this, which are also quite similar to Neanderthals and proto-humans that were on Earth and on Mars. Okay? Crazy stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Clips coming up now.